So uh, thanks for hanging on uh, for the last talk of, of the last session of the day. I commend you all on your uh, conference endurance. And uh, let's get started. So before driverless cars get here, uh, and as Nick showed in the previous study, we can, we can do stuff while we're driving and, and in the car. And we can take in information, we can, we can uh, communicate information, but a, a good question is when is a good time to, uh, in, to give that information? And so that's what we, that's what we did in this study. Uh, what we did was we created a data set in order to use machine learning uh, to try to predict when cars should talk to people. And this is because people drive better with speech interfaces than other sorts of interfaces. And, uh, but conversing does degrade performance, uh, and so we would like to degrade that performance in times when it's safe to do so. And so this is the uh, environment that we did. We used a Toyota Prius and had a bunch of equipment in the back. Here are two students that, uh, that were really instrumental in running our participants. Uh, they, it must be the beginning of the quarter because they look happy. Uh, they certainly weren't by the end of the quarter. Uh, but they are great guys. Uh, here's what the data collection devices look like, and and we brought all of this, pumped all this information into that laptop that I just showed you in the back of the car. Uh, we had a GPS up front. We were getting information out of the car, uh, such as speed, uh, speed, steering wheel angle, things like that. Uh, we had two cam, we had four cameras on the driver collecting video, two cameras on the driver to get depth, so to tell if the driver's leaning forward or back. Uh, and then we had a, an IMU to get pitch roll and yaw of, of the car. And so with this setup, what we did was we asked drivers uh, to drive a route, and um, the, the computer in the back would prompt them with the question, is now a good time to receive non-essential uh, information, like a text or a sports score or news or weather kind of update uh, what was what they were doing. And then they responded based on what they were doing, if it was a good time or not. And if they could, they'd give us a reason for doing so. So uh, this is what it looks like when Wendy did it. And so let's watch one. Is now a good time? No, no. So it wasn't a good time for her because she was uh, exiting the freeway and, it, and she was not alone in that, uh, it, it specifically in ex exiting the freeway. Oh, nope. Hang, hang on, buddy. Okay, so uh, we didn't have just Wendy do it. We had uh, 62 uh, drivers complete uh, a 45-minute drive on a 16-mile track. Everyone drove the same route. Uh, it was a mix of highway, uh, expressway, uh, suburban and urban roads. The, uh, they had 65 it, uh, is now a good time queries per drive. And uh, they, like I said, I, I, uh, and we also did a little post interview with the driver. So what, was it a good time? Is now a good time? Yeah, no, it's fine. I just stopped for a red. I'm good. Is now a good time? Yes. Is now a good time? Yes, at a stoplight. Is now a good time? Yes. I'm just driving straight and I don't need to navigate or. Is now a good time? No, I'm trying to figure out. Turn right onto Waverly Street, then oh, arrive at the waypoint. It's this light right here. Is now a good time? No, I'm trying to figure out if I turn here. Yes. Turn left onto Farrell's Lane. Is now a good time? No, no. Is now a good time? No, merging into traffic.
Okay. So we saw a couple different uh, reasons there. So uh, this is the route that they, they drove. Uh, they started kind of here in the, the, uh, at, at our garage at Stanford. Uh, and you can see that uh, the green dots, which are all kind of on a line, are where uh, people were on the route, but sometimes people got off the route. And that's these red dots where uh, they made a wrong turn. One thing to note is this is downtown Palo Alto. And uh, they closed some roads on us and didn't really let us know. And they were on our route. So uh, people came back and were like, hey, we had to go a different way. And that, that's why the data is a little, uh, little messy there. Uh, and Come on, guy. Apologize. So here's some results, because this is the slide my computer stopped on. Oh, God. Now is not a good time. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is the probability of them saying it was a good time uh, across all the, all the data sets. And uh, here we can see that uh, green is a high probability, is, uh, is a good time, and red is a bad time. And we see some things like uh, turns uh, kind of drop the probability, but this area all along here is, uh, is, is freeway, so the freeway is kind of a good time. And, and generally straight is good. Uh, an area where you have a lot of turns in short succession uh, ended, up to, ended up being bad. Uh, overall, we saw that uh, m mainly it's a good time to, to give the driver information. R participants responded yes 77.9% uh, of the time. Uh, another good thing that we take out of this is that uh, there were only 52 no answers or kind of seven things that were, were odd. And so we weren't putting drivers under any kind of undue stress with this, with this task. Uh, I showed you that people were on and off the route before. And it's better to be on the route uh, for it to be a good time than, than to be, be off the route. And this is a significant difference. Uh, so we went in and we coded. Uh, you know, we recorded the video, and then we went back and coded if they said it was a good time or not. Uh, and then what, we wrote down what their reason was. But then as the research team, we also wrote down what was going on. So I'm going to show you some of, some of that information. Uh, so uh, what kind of words they used after they said yes in their reasoning are, are shown here from most used to, uh, to, to uh, lesser used. Um, and so they'd say things, like, and you saw in the video, like, I'm, I'm, wait I'm just waiting at a stoplight, or I'm driving straight and traffic is light. Uh, because the word light has two meanings, it, gets, it is you know, elevated, but that's just a... Um, fall out of the semantics. Um, and then you see stopped, stop, uh, stop or stopped, uh, red, waiting. So you get the idea. Stopped at lights uh, is a good time. Driving straight is, is also a good time. So the frequency of words that they said after, after uh, saying no uh, all imply action, you know, kind of, or many imply action. Turning, trying, uh, figure, <laughs> the GPS gets mentioned. Uh, merging intersections, uh, and, and then uh, one thing to point out is that turn uh, is kind of dissimilar from the other words here in this list in that it's used in a good time frequency, but that's because people would say things like, uh, I'm waiting to make a turn, or I am trying to turn. So that, that's, what, that's how that word gets in there twice. So. This is the uh, individual responses where uh, teal is the a person who said yes. The, the y, uh, each bar represents a driver. The y-axis is the percent of time they said yes. Uh, with uh, this person on the far left saying yes to everything, uh, and a person here saying yes only about 40% uh, of the time. Now, this didn't vary based on age uh, or gender or number of years driving or number of days driving per week. Uh, so we take this as information that, uh, that the, system, the individual differences uh, 
matter here a lot. And so you might imagine a, a car in the future that it has some uh, system built in to monitor you, and then you know when you press one to adjust your seat, it also knows what your kind of interruptibility baseline is, and and is and is learning on that. So. On this graph, the, uh, the vehicle speed is on the uh, y-axis uh, in kilometers, and then on the x-axis, we have a change in brake pressure. And so a zero means that the, the brake is either fully depressed and at a stop or completely released. They're not in the action, uh, in the process of, of applying the brake. Uh, obviously, on the, the right side means they're applying the brake, and on the left side means they're, they're letting off of the brake of, of zero. And then the color indicates the probability that it's a good time, uh, from, from dark being bad uh, to, to yellow being good. And, and so we see applying the brake is worse, letting off the brake is a little bit better, but e either being stopped or uh, with no brake pre pressure uh, is, is kind of the best. Uh, this chart uh, compares uh, vehicle speed and, and steering signal. So vehicle speed is the same as the last chart, but steering signal is uh, to the left side of zero is a left-hand turn, and to the right side of zero is a right-hand turn. Uh, so like we, like we saw in the participants' responses, uh, the, when the car is driving straight is the best time. Turning left seems to be a little bit worse than turning right. One last one, uh, again at the bottom we have the uh, change in, in brake pressure, so zero means that they're fully on the brake or completely off the brake. Uh, and then on the, the y-axis we have the change in vehicle speed, so this could be stopped at a light or uh, driving constantly, and we see that uh, this kind of constant speed uh, and constant brake pressure is really the, the, a, a uh, nice point. So what we're doing, is, what, we, what we've shown here is that the data that we can get out of the can in the car supports with, it, it uh, marries up with what our participants said uh, they were doing uh, in the car. So, so we wanted to use machine learning to understand uh, the user experience and we aligned all of, all of these uh, uh, data streams to do that. Uh, and we, and, but unfortunately, uh, the overall performance of the uh, uh, of our model that we use uh, leaves room for for improvement. Um, so, 80 percent performance uh, of, for correctly detecting bad times would only uh, save about 35 percent of the driving window. Uh, so, we we think this is kind of the or the machine we use um, the machine learning we use is in, insufficient to capture many the nuance, uh, many of the nuances about whether it's a good time to interrupt. And so just a summary, whoops, guess not. Oh God. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so we found that many times it's a good time. There's sometimes when it's not. Uh, sometimes the participants didn't say is uh, when the uh, when pedestrians are around, uh, when they're turning, of course, uh, merging on the freeway. Like I said, uh, it's also not a good time when there is a cop behind you or if you've gotten pulled over by a cop. Uh, we had one participant who ran a red light because it was a weird intersection, uh, got pulled over by the cop. The, the machine popped is now a good time, and he said, no, <laughs> no. Fortunately, he talked his way out of the ticket and uh, is good to go. Uh, one thing that I want to note about our data is that the people were, were slightly agreeable. Uh, they knew they weren't going to get actual information uh, after the prompt. We just wanted to know about timing. And so in some cases, they agreed with us, maybe not when they, when they should have. They, they would say things like, yeah, and so that gives us indication that those not good times are short, but then people uh, were, were a little bit agreeable. So I kind of look at this as an upper end of, of people's availability. So pending your questions, that's all I have.
Shops Iqbal, Microsoft Research. Very interesting talk, thank you. So I, I was thinking about this, and so there's interruption timing, and then there's interruption content, and this one looked at timing. I was thinking about the content itself, so depending on what the interruption is about, so people might have very different reactions. And when I looked at the probability uh, figure that you had, so I was looking for stretches of time when people said yes. And this speaks to the fact that maybe you could use that to determine what kind of task you want to give a person. So if it's something super quick and you know that their st state is not going to change anytime quick quickly, uh, or their state is going to change soon, then maybe you just want that task to be super short. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the type of task certainly uh, would, would change this uh, quite a bit. So, uh, but those, those brief times are also short. Uh, and so, um, but, but we can't, the thing that people didn't really have to do is make a guess about the length that of time that it would be good for that survey. So we could we imagine a future study where we give people a bunch of uh, trivia questions, see which ones they get wrong, and then tell them the answers to those while they're doing this task. And then when they come back to the lab, we test them again. And, and to kind of put some skin in the game there. But even that is only a short task. It's not like reading an email to, to, uh, to someone. You can also imagine that uh, even if you said yes and reading an email, uh, and you missed a few lines of the email, you'd still kind of fill in uh, the, the, what was missing there, too. So, uh, yeah, more work to be done there, for sure. Uh, hi, Janine Volk from uh, Here Technologies. Um, thank you for this presentation. Um, I have a question. So you, uh, most of the participants, or all of the participants were in uh, a navigation context, so none of them actually knew uh, the route. How would this look if um, they were on familiar routes? Because, I mean, most people are hardly ever going on unfamiliar routes. Like most of the time they're commutes or... Yeah. So they're, they're very, um, so it seems like some of them may not have a good time yet. Like they, they said that it wasn't a good time also because they were concentrating on the route because they were in unfamiliar settings. Uh, yeah, so the, the, uh, we didn't kind of, um, we could have asked a good question about route familiarity there. Yeah. Um, the. I, I can I can tell you a couple of things. But our participant pool has some affiliation with Stanford, so they have some route familiarity with the area. Um, the, many of them are students, and um, this area up here is um, is Atherton, which is uh, very wealthy, and not many students know that area for that reason. Uh, but then this this area is you know where they, where all the restaurants are, and this area is all on campus. So um, I think you're right. The route familiarity d would modulate this. We just weren't. Uh, we didn't collect the data to do yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it just sounds like very interesting from this graph specifically because I mean I, I'm working in a, a car context as well. Um, like when you have the turns, um, I mean, this is when, when users really have to concentrate, right? Because right. they need to make the decision whether it's going to be left or right. They need to decide what lane they're going to go into. And so there's obviously some more mental load than going on a, like a straight uh, stretch, basically. Yeah. Yep. Given that, it, let's wait. Uh, that's where we're, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're at the time. I'm sure the speaker will be around because it's very exciting content. So we'll all want to ask some extra questions, I hope. Um, before we thank all the speakers, I want to say again that if this is the type of work that you're interested in, there's a whole community of us here, which are the audio UI community. We'll have a meetup tomorrow during the coffee break. We're going to tweet about it from the automotive UI uh, conference uh, committee. If you want to know more, just talk to me right now. I can tell you more. Um, with that, I want to thank you all for attending this session and thank all the speakers again.